Hello, welcome, good afternoon, hello, I hope everybody feels fine. We can start uh, gradually our discussion. So next 15 minutes, one hour, we'll speak about ethical implications of emerging technologies in business, balancing innovation and responsibility. So, and we have wonderful three panelists, very international panel, and I'm pleased to welcome Professor Eugenia um, Greco uh, from Romania, uh, University of Timisoara. Welcome to Latvia. Thank you. And uh, teaching assistant from Egypt, Anshams University, Ahmed El Tohami. Welcome. And of course, uh, our head of Vizeme University Cybersecurity Program, uh, Cybersecurity Engineering, uh, Christoph Feltenbergs. Hello. And I'm honored to chair and moderate this panel. I'm also teaching assistant, uh, professor assistant in Vizeme University, uh, teaching business law and other uh, studies uh, field in Vizeme University. And my first question uh, would be how to our wonderful panelists, uh, in your opinion, uh, what are the main challenges business facing today when implementing technologies, machine learning and uh, facing uh, different AI systems, um, big data analytics, how you see, uh, what kind of ethical challenges you see? Maybe we can start with Professor Eugenia, please. I'm not an uh, expert in uh, that field. I must uh, tell you that I finished, uh, first of all, uh, chemical engineer five years. After that, five years economics, finance, banking, and after that, four years law. And I have a PhD in economics, but uh, generally speaking, I teach economics and uh, also ethics for uh, public uh, administration. And um, from this point of view regarding with public administration, I uh, can say that uh, such a challenge can be regarding uh, misalignment between uh, artificial intelligence and uh, management de decision making. Also uh, tensions with linguistic and uh, national culture. Um, also uh, developing and uh, implementing uh, AI structure, um, something uh, problems regarding data integrity and sharing, and uh, also uh, ethical and governance concern, in my opinion. I don't know. Uh, okay, thank you. Maybe you can give an example, one example in your um, experience from Romania and your university, what could be this uh, challenge, ethical dilemma for emerging technologies, from your experience? Uh, the rules are not all the time uh, respected, and uh, sometimes uh, some people are forced to do uh, something uh, under the law. Also, humans are not following always the rules and ethics. So, ethics is soft rules, morals, yes, and here we speak about ethics. And even if the law sometimes is challenged, then ethics, of course, is even softer than the law. Okay, thank you, Professor. And we can uh, hear the next answer from Egypt. Uh, what is your opinion about key uh, challenges in business facing artificial intelligence? Okay, so mainly because uh, it's one of my domain experts, uh, so I can talk more about this stuff. Uh, the first thing that is, uh, the, there are large data, there are large amounts of data and it's all personal and uh, the businesses that use AI and models, they, uh, they might use these personal and sensitive data and, uh, and without the consent of the user itself. So this is a very uh, huge ethical complication in this matter. Uh, each one, each business, uh, when they implement the models, or even when they use the model, they should enforce the user itself that these data or the data that they are using, it should be uh, very transparent to them that they are using the data for one, two, and three. So this is one of the first main uh, challenges in this stuff. Uh, the other thing, mainly it is a little bit technical, it's a bias of the AI itself. So the models itself, they are trained and uh, with, with our data. Uh, and the data itself might, must, might be biased. Biased, so it might be taken from one source, 
not just many sources. So what ethical complication might this happen or what, 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 what would this do mainly? This will uh, lead to uh, decisions which from the AI models itself, uh, which are not uh, uh, equal. There will be some kind of inequality and some kind of racism as well. So this is also very important that the data itself that is used to train these AI models uh, should be uh, from a source and should be a variety of sources. Uh, finally, the transparency of the algorithms itself that are used in the AI models, they are not visible. So they are not uh, used how, how, do they, how do these uh, models work exactly. Uh, so uh, they should enforce the users themselves that the models work by one, two, and three. The explainability of how these models work exactly should be, used, uh, should be visible to the user, even, even if it's a closed source model. That is because uh, the user himself should know how the decision was taken based on his data, because this will cause an ethical implication. That is one of my opinions. Uh, finally, of course, uh, cyber threats uh, that might happen in critical systems in these AI models which are used in finance and healthcare, uh, any cyber threats uh, might cause a, a huge issue because these critical systems are used everywhere. So, so we should uh, make sure uh, and invest in cybersecurity. And of course, uh, my dear professor, you will talk more about this. So these are mine. Thank you. Excellent. So trustworthy, transparency, and human in command. That uh, human beings, we are not losing control of artificial intelligence decisions, and we are not also part of system. We make the system, yes. Uh, that's also incorporated in uh, law, in the European uh, Union level, I Act, yes, Artificial Intelligence Act, which entered into force this August. Yes, so it's a very new law, the first law in the uh, world regulating artificial intelligence and uh, maybe Egypt also will follow EU um, exactly, yes. legislation and will also incorporate GDPR rules and, and artificial intelligence regulations stronger. And uh, Christ, uh, what is your opinion for, from cybersecurity aspects or any other aspects you see in this um, ethical challenges using artificial intelligence? Yes, as uh, my recent experience, and actually not, e not even recent, but uh, for a decade at least, is uh, really focused on cybersecurity and technical point of view. I would say that uh, the one thing that really matters is uh, that you understand what you work with, technology-wise, details, uh, and obviously data is uh, all around us. So starting with the way how you collect it, uh, then the way and where the technology where you store it, how you process it, for how long you store it, and uh, when you actually delete it. So basically the life cycle of the data should be clear and uh, should be explained. If you cannot explain it, or if you don't know, I think there's a huge issue there, right? And obviously, uh, uh, behind the innovations, there are developers. Developers like to, you know, explore new things, uh, put, put, in, put innovations in, into work and, and uh, even without actually knowing uh, what it does behind the scenes. So it could be quite a huge challenge if you implement a business or a finance-wise solution that you cannot explain how it works behind the scenes. So I think uh, that's one of the key things. Uh, the other is that uh, the other is trend. A lot of companies are, you know, um, following a trend that they, that they need to put into their solutions the latest technologies. For example, uh, I saw one picture on the internet. Uh, it was from a movie uh, where Leonardo DiCaprio was the main actor, and uh, uh, he asked, uh, "Sell me this pen." And before 10 years or even even more, you would explain that, okay, this pen can, uh, you can write it in rain, you can, you can write it on any kind of surface, uh, it will, the ink will glow in the night, whatever. Now you would sell it by telling it's AI powered pen. So, uh, a lot of companies are using exactly this technique to actually sell their products, put the AI into their products, and uh, that's the key selling point without actually, you know, real meaningful reason behind it. 
So it's a fancy word, artificial intelligence. It was invented, actually, this terminology in 1956. John McCarty invented this title, artificial intelligence. And now we're in 2040, 2024, sorry, I'm in 2040 at the moment. And uh, this uh, word sounds very fancy, as you said. Yes, it gives uh, value added. And if you want to sound modern and equipped with tools, so you should work with artificial intelligence, no doubt. And you mentioned shops and life cycle of, for example, video records. And I just recalled one case then for security reason. One video uh, was um, kept and stored two months. That was life cycle of this data, yes, video data. But actually police uh, found it and wanted to search and check it three months later. But it was erased. So it also has pros and cons as every, uh, every system, as every challenge. So this storage of data is really a challenge. Yes. Sometimes it's good that it's erased and sometimes it's bad yes, for uh, criminal records or checking or that. Okay, so let's get, uh, turn to the next question. Very excellent uh, first round and, and we have four more. Uh -huh. And uh, if you have some questions from the aud auditory, I'm also uh, very glad to pick them up. So how you can Im ensure this transparency and trustworthy yes, and human in command, these three principles in uh, using emerging technologies and also uh, especially in decision-making process. Yes, to ensure this human in command, trustworthy and also transparency. Uh, in my opinion, interdisciplinary and uh, multi-stakeholder uh, approaches are uh, essential for uh, achieving uh, transparency and accountability in uh, AI systems. That's why uh, collaboration between uh, different uh, disciplines, uh, such as uh, computer science, law, uh, ethics, um, other social science, uh, usually can help to identify and address the complex uh, challenges uh, associated with uh, AI uh, governance. Um, I can say uh, documentation of uh, AI uh, systems uh, coupled with uh, other ethical uh, uh, guidelines assure uh, AI uh, driver decision and uh, transparent and uh, accountable. Um, regarding data explainability, uh, we must uh, make uh, sure, be sure that uh, AI's uh, decision making uh, crystal clear by uh, documenting and sharing its uh, logic and uh, criteria. Uh, this uh, boosts uh, usually transparency, fostering trust with the uh, user and uh, stakeholders. Um, it's uh, used to keep uh, detailed uh, records, uh, document every step of uh, AI uh, process, questions asked, uh, data used, uh, decision made, uh, and uh, it's uh, safety net uh, ensuring, uh, ensuring uh, accountability and uh, providing a basis for uh, review or uh, improvement. Uh, there are a few steps regarding the data minimization uh, um, and uh, transparency. Um, Anonymization, maybe also. Yes, uh, data explainability, data ethics. Uh, uh, I suppose there are the most important things uh, in so regarding this aspect. Data is really the key. What, we, what data are collected, uh, they should be trustworthy, they should be also checked to be bias-free, for instance, and discrimination-free, and, and uh, really uh, put a human in the center, like serve society, yes, and, and help uh, all decision-making. Uh, thank you. And um, uh, Mr. El Tohemi, what, what is your opinion uh, how we can share these free values and ethical values in uh, artificial intelligence and generative artificial intelligence and other systems are coming? So, uh, as the discussion was said, uh, also uh, explainable AI for both the technology users and the users, the end users as, uh, 
uh, who use the models frequency the generative AI uh, they must know how these AI models work both tech wise and the users wise themselves uh, also uh, there is something very important there must be auditing systems for these models uh, to ensure that these models do not take any decisions that are not uh, correct or biased as we said uh, from before uh, these audit systems should uh, auto be automatic they should uh, not uh, be uh, uh, in, uh, in awaiting response from someone these they should uh, detect the bias and should monitor it uh, of course by humans and of course the most important thing that was said we must ensure humans that uh, interact with these models and they should human oversight is very very important in this uh, uh, part because at the end of the day uh, AI is made for us not for for anyone so the AI should not be used uh, without our consent uh, also, data transparency, as the professor said, is very, very important. Uh, transparency of the data and the origin of the data should be uh, coming from a good source and, and from the vari variable sources. Uh, this will uh, make the decision making better because the data is coming from several sources. And I have an example of that. Uh, there is uh, the AI generating, uh, the image generating uh, model, which is Midjourney and Dali. I think uh, they are very. Uh, well known, these image uh, models, uh, generative AI models, uh, they uh, had very issues, they had ethical implications because the artists themselves, which the data was used uh, to train, uh, the artist said that they did not use it with their consent. Thus, uh, the decision of what the model did was different from what uh, that was, uh, that would be expected from these artists and these artists should know that this data is uh, used from them. Uh, and finally, of course, the regulations should monitor the decision-making of these uh, models and there should be regulations that monitor these. This is my opinion. True, very true. And uh, just to step back a little bit before Christoph's will be commenting uh, uh, this question, I also uh, asked um, generative artificial intelligence chatbots about uh, one decision of European Court of Human Rights just preparing for my studies. and. It fa faked it. It was not real decision. Yes. Uh, so generative artificial intelligence right decision, non-existing decision. Yes. Also avoiding these fakes and and uh, just some information which is just not true. Yes. Uh, so um, some years ago we talked about chatbot traders. Maybe we should talk about artificial intelligence system mentors, coaches coaches or, or uh, some other uh, just uh, human in command, yes, or the artificial intelligence, yes, or even the team of uh, top experts. Christoph, what is your view about this um, transparency, accountability or task force and human in command? In command? So to put it simple, I think the question is uh, if you, whether you can trust AI-based decisions, right? So uh, I, I have a counter question to all of you. Uh, Will you, would you get in uh, in a self-driving AI taxi? So obviously there are those taxis in the US for example and maybe in other countries. But uh, I think the answer is that maybe you would, but based on conditions, on several conditions, on the environment, on uh, how good are the roads, what's around it and, and what's, what's the traffic intensity and, and uh, that kind of things. So. Uh, I think that um, you, need, you, you need to keep challenging AI-based decisions every day. You cannot uh, put AI in a control in front of uh, critical infrastructure systems, like uh, uh, you know, releasing some water in pipes, uh, firing up some boilers, uh, whatever. So I, I think that AI technology, uh, it can be as a good assistant it can provide insights in uh, data because it works with a large set of uh, data which, which you cannot achieve with a simple search engine on, or any other technology but um, for critical infrastructure and for I think most of the systems uh, we still need to rely on deterministic approach with specific rules binded to specific actions. Sure. So let's make a test. Let's vote. Who would drive the self-driving car? We don't have in Latvia self-driving cars, so no problems, no worries. Nobody will have to go with that car. But let's theoretically, I suppose, who would drive 
to drive with or ride without driving car. In a back seat, of course. Yes. Back seat, yes, as a passenger, of course. Let's vote. No. I see one hand, yes, <laughs> from our full class, so only one, and no one from the panelists, including me, yes. So we still prefer to keep the role and everything in our control, yes, so human in command. Uh, no, just a car, ordinary car. Imagine Uber, Uber car uh, without a driver, yes. You take your credit card, so only one brave person, yes, from this class would uh, dare to try it. But a few years later, maybe we all would raise our hands, yes. Let's see how it will evolve. Okay, let's turn to our next question. And what are the strategies? How can we balance uh, this emerging technologies and, for instance, uh, driverless cars, yes, a business interest uh, with this uh, uh, ethical aspects and and, um, and uh, privacy of data you mentioned, uh, of course, and other ethics. Uh, I can say in the last year, uh, data privacy has uh, become a crucial uh, concern for individuals and also for organizations alike. Uh, with uh, the increasing uh, reliance on technology and on the internet, uh, protecting personal information and... Uh, Virginia, sorry, I have to ask you to keep closer the microphone. Thank you. Um, with the increasing uh, reliance on technology and uh, on the internet, uh, protecting uh, personal information and uh, maintaining a uh, balance between uh, innovation and uh, security has uh, become uh, paramount. Um, the challenges and importance of uh, data privacy, highlighting the need for finding uh, uh, the perfect uh, balance between technology, uh, technological advances and uh, safeguarding uh, personal information. And uh, data privacy refers to the protection and control uh, individuals uh, have over their uh, personal information and that data. It involves uh, you know, ensuring that uh, sensitive data such as uh, financial records, uh, health information or uh, unique uh, identifiers uh, remain uh, confidential and uh, secure. Uh, in the digital uh, landscape, uh, where uh, vast uh, amounts of data are collected, uh, stored and uh, shared, maintaining uh, data privacy, and uh, this become uh, essential for uh, safeguarding uh, individuals' uh, rights uh, and protecting them from uh, potential. Including also consumers. For instance, as we see, we don't want to consume self-driving cars use, yes, uh, uh, at the moment, yes. So it's also the business and society cooperating, which business model is acceptable, yes, from the eyes of society, yes, also for using, for, for data, for everything you also mentioned, these implications. Thank you. Um, Mr. El Tohomi, what is your view about strategies, right strategies, uh, to not to stop uh, the technologies, but to use it in a uh, good way, uh, respecting privacy, data privacy, and consumers' rights? Uh, so my opinion, uh, the, the emerging businesses will use AI. Uh, it's nothing that to, to be discussed. It is a current technology, and it's emerging technology, and it will be used. So one of the most important things that must be done is uh, a strategy that is called privacy by design principle. So what is privacy by design? When I design a system or when I design an AI model, I have to make sure that uh, I am uh, incorporating my privacy uh, or privacy design principles inside the, the infrastructure of the model itself. That way, when, when, develop, when developing these systems, the users themselves will feel safe that they, the, the privacy, they can read the privacy, uh, and also the, the tech, the people in the tech industry who are already working on these models uh, will also be uh, safe, they will, they will feel safe that they are implementing these strategies. So this is very, very important. It's a feature in building these models. 
the other thing if, uh, that was mentioned earlier, data minimization. Data minimization is very, very important. We, we use the data for the model that we want to use it only, not all the data that, uh, that is currently present. And of course, something that, uh, was, uh, that is very important as well is encryption of these data. Because if a cyber threat happened uh, and these data was somehow leaked or something, if these data is, encrypt is encrypted, uh, there will be no issues with this part. So this is very important, encryption of the data that is used for in these AI models. Uh, of course, the transparency of the data that uh, was mentioned before, and uh, training and investment in cybersecurity is very, very important in this uh, matter. Uh, and of course, the governance uh, framework policies uh, should be implemented, uh, and of course, law policies should be uh, uh, guided because uh, these uh, uh, yeah, law policies is, are very important to govern uh, the business models that use this uh, without uh, stopping innovation that we mentioned right now. Uh, internal and finally, uh, from my own point of view, internal committees, internal law committees should be also implemented in businesses who are using the AI models themselves. These internal committees will show uh, if there are any breach of uh, privacy or any uh, breach of policy. True. And also what you mentioned about law, that's in our last question and regulation, but EU has already followed this way and classified like unacceptable, unacceptable risk, artificial intelligence, like autonomous lethal weapons and scoring people and, and, and so, and high risk. So this should definitely be uh, like manipulative or uh, some other uh, technologies which might be just dangerous, in one word, uh, dangerous. Chris, what is your uh, view about, uh, thank you, uh, what is your view about the uh, right strategy? I would, exp I would agree that uh, uh, privacy by design is the key uh, strategy uh, that uh, could be applied uh, going along with the AI emerging technologies. Um, but uh, I would also say that, um, um, let's say, explainable AI approach is, is also one of the key factors because, uh, well, as I mentioned previously, a lot of people, including technical ones, don't actually understand what's behind it. And uh, if you even speak about uh, other people, like uh, we need to consider generations. We need to consider that uh, in some countries, also here in Latvia, uh, we have quite significant amount of older people and uh, it's, it's very hard sometimes to explain that uh, hey, now in order to turn on a TV you need to use voice control for example, so uh, something, they, something like that, so it's, it's, it's a challenge for them to accept these technologies, so I think that uh, how we could proceed in more or less successful way is uh, to approach hybrid strategy of implementation, right? We don't want to say no to these innovations, to AI, but we want to take it uh, further in a bit slower pace than uh, maybe it's currently going on. So. To when you mentioned this uh, about the more senior people, I just uh, remember one case from Ukraine. We all sympathize with Ukraine, and uh, there was one uh, short episode, short uh, movie that uh, grandmother killed basically the drove with a jar of cucumbers, just throwing it to the drone, and <laughs> that was it. Yes. Um, sometimes, yes, we don't understand what we don't understand. We are afraid of and. and so a fastly evolving technology, of course, is a powerful, but also at the same time uh, with uh, some risks and very high risks. And so that's why we're here and discussing how to eliminate these risks. So my next question would be about the implications to the labor market. Yes, because of course in automation, a lot of manual uh, work, especially, yes, will be displaced like uh, monotonous, uh, monotone and repetitive tasks will be replaced simply by sorting and are already replaced, yes. And uh, so what is your view about uh, implication to uh, some uh, professions, job families, how we say, and uh, also future of work, we can say, uh, which professions are the most endangered, if we say so, yes, if you can name also the family jobs. 
including maybe professors and judges even, yes. Um, but my professional, uh, pro uh, personal view is that uh, judgment should always be done by human. I would not like to go to the court yes. uh, where artificial intelligence is deciding uh, about the morals or, or some uh, other law enforcement. Yes. Okay, so replacement and displacement of jobs. Uh, what is your view about yes, this? Yes, uh, I must uh, say that uh, I consider there is an ethical responsibility for uh, companies and also for the governments uh, to invest in, in uh, reskilling uh, and uh, upskilling programs uh, to help workers to adapt to the changing job landscape, uh, ensuring uh, access to educational opportunities uh, is, um, I suppose, uh, crucial to address uh, the potential uh, skill gap. Uh, regarding uh, ethical implications of uh, using uh, robots in the workplace, I can say that um, uh, the use of robots in uh, workplaces is uh, becoming uh, increasingly common with uh, many industries using uh, automation to streamline processes and increase uh, efficiency. While uh, robots uh, can be uh, beneficial uh, in many ways, uh, there are uh, also uh, ethical implications to consider from uh, job displacements to safety, uh, safety concerns, privacy issues, and uh, also moral uh, consideration. Uh, I think it's important to explore the potential ethical issue that can arise uh, when uh, using robots in uh, the workplace. Uh, regarding job displacement, uh, one um, um, of the aspects is uh, that as robots become more advanced and capable uh, of uh, performing a wider range of tasks, uh, many may take uh, over jobs and uh, were uh, once uh, done by uh, humans. This could lead to significant job loss, uh, particularly in, in industries such as manufacturing and transportation. I already saw uh, monorail, I uh, talk uh, about this uh, not only in uh, Abu Dhabi, but uh, also in uh, Lille uh, in France, uh, in uh, Vancouver in Canada, uh, and uh, now, uh, now driver, uh, safety travel uh, without uh, not so many employers like in uh, normal transport. See, yes, it's not always, uh, maybe it's very fancy, but, uh, but I would still prefer the concierge welcoming to the train or, 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 or and it's, at the end of the day, it's a political decision, isn't it? Which job should be uh, given to the people and which uh, to the machines? Uh, but we academia can influence and make the society thought and, and uh, shape it uh, for a brighter and, and better uh, future. So, Mr. Uh, El Tokami, what is your uh, So uh, this question is very important because I have a personal experience from uh, from this from this question. So uh, it, what happened when AI first emerged? I'm asking the audience. What happened when AI first emerged? We all thought that our jobs would would, would go away because AI is doing stuff that is not. Uh, uh, we did not think that it might do this stuff. Uh, so back at my university, uh, we had a very interesting stuff that happened. Uh, the process that, uh, that, that we used in the university was paperwork mainly uh, before. So uh, I was responsible, me and my colleagues, uh, uh, in order to transfer uh, this, pro uh, to transfer this or automate the entire process of the university management system. So when we tried to impl implement this uh, automation process, all the employees said we will lose our jobs. We cannot, we cannot use this. We, cannot, we, we do not accept the automation process that you are using. So what did we do? We had some very important challenges in this part. We, we ensured the employees that uh, the job will not be lost. Uh, the automation process is used in order to uh, facilitate uh, the jobs, not to end their jobs. Uh, thus ensuring the employees that, this, uh, that the jobs are uh, 
uh, are insured and they, they not lose their jobs is very, very important. This is one of the stuff. So this is from my personal uh, uh, experience uh, back at my university. Also, uh, we ensure that, that there are new roles uh, that with these automation and with these models and with AI models, new job descriptions uh, uh, appear. So if a, if, if, if a person is already uh, skilled enough to work with, the, with, with something, uh, they must adapt to the new changes or to the new roles that are appearing. And this happened when mobile phones, for example, uh, appeared. Uh, people were using the telephone and when mobile phones appeared, uh, a lot of people said that these mobile phones will, will impact uh, greatly how uh, every job works. Uh, but at the end of the day, now we have social media experts, which was not present before. Uh, we also have uh, 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 all the internet uh, jobs that we uh, that is currently uh, happening. Graphics designing, for example, uh, these new jobs will emerge after the technology that uh, that happened. So this will happen after AI as well. Uh, so mainly, I, I, I was talking about ensuring the employees that their jobs will not upskilling the employees, uh, and of course, uh, AI is made for to enhance our quality of life. Uh, it's not used to replace our quality of life. Uh, and finally, of course, the regulations is very, very important to ensure that uh, the people working in the sector uh, or the people who are working uh, do not lose their jobs. This is my opinion. Thank you. Upskilling and reskilling, yes, is, is really the key and artificial intelligence ex as accessory, very needed accessory, yes, not like replacing, yes, really simple jobs will be uh, replaced, that's, but that's the way it goes because of competitiveness, yes, we need to be competitive, we need to be fast and everything, but of course, um, a reskilling, upskilling and changing adapting to the future and using it in favor is, is the key. Krista, what is your view about this uh, job future? Yes, I was thinking about saying, and I've heard, I think you've heard it too, that uh, survival of those who will, who will be able to adapt, right? So we live in quite crazy world nowadays. Uh, for example, uh, my father, my mother, they are doing the same work, basically the same work for the past 30 plus years. So. I think we currently live in a very different world than it was, you know, like 10 or 20 years ago. And um, we need to adapt, we need to reskill, we need to upskill, uh, we need to continuously learn and uh, basically be part of these emerging technologies, use them. Regarding the job losses, or I, I, I don't fully agree that uh, there's going to be, um, you know, such a problem for everyone. Um, obviously, people will need to adapt and will need to learn new things. Still, when we'll have automation everywhere, I think we, we will do we will do have a lot of automation in all kinds of industries and fields. But still, uh, we'll need to do maintenance on that automation. Obviously, that person uh, who used to work with, with the wrench, they will need to learn computer skills. But still, they'll be uh, part of the society. True. It is already, yes, we can say so, yes. And the last question to our uh, wonderful panelists is, uh, what is the role of regulation? So, I already mentioned, like, Artificial Intelligence EU Act and also data regulation or GDPR. We know, uh, well, Egypt is outside these regulations, but I think you also have stricter and stricter rules. So, what is the re uh, role of regulation? It is, uh, like, limiting? or it is just uh, providing this uh, transparency, trustworthy and ethics of the artificial intelligence. How you see this uh, regulation role, like law, ro role of the law? Uh, I think uh, the laws and regulation are, uh, must be designed to maintain a fair competition, to protect uh, intellectual property, ensure uh, consumer uh, safety and prevent uh, unethical uh, practices. Understanding these uh, legal frameworks is crucial for uh, businesses to navigate successfully in a competitive and uh, innovative uh, environment. 
Uh, that's why uh, recent uh, technological advancement have uh, changed uh, almost all aspects uh, of our uh, daily uh, lives, uh, from how we work and play uh, to how you communicate. Uh, the broad scope of uh, technology-driven uh, changes has made uh, it clear trust that uh, business community and government leaders uh, must consider uh, the ethical implications of uh, innovations that can uh, negatively affect uh, people's life. Uh, for example, it's recently been discovered that some uh, large language uh, models uh, the technology that uh, powered chatbots such as ChatGPT uh, demonstrate uh, cover uh, races. And uh, there are also other examples. Maybe my colleagues want to say uh, other uh, things regarding this aspect. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, one of the main things that should be done is that regulations should uh, set minimum privacy uh, statements, uh, which all companies or all business models should adhere to, because uh, setting a minimum line for this is very important uh, for businesses when they take decisions or when they use these models. Uh, another thing, uh, ensuring fair competition mainly, uh, because one business should, uh, might, might use uh, or might implement an AI model that uses the data without consent of the user itself, which will give him, a, uh, which will give the, the business, of course, a huge advantage over other businesses. So regulations should set at least a fair competition policies in their uh, list of guidelines. Uh, also, uh, regulations should uh, encourage uh, in innovation, as you said, uh, with boundaries, of course, based on what uh, was discussed earlier. Uh, and uh, also, uh, policy makers are very important and, uh, business and law experts uh, should be put in the circle of uh, making these uh, regulations and uh, in the business models, uh, in the businesses that uses these models or implement these models in themselves. And as my uh, professor said here, uh, uh, some uh, chatbots uh, like ChatGPT, uh, their decisions are very, very uh, they, they, they might uh, make some very bad biased decisions uh, and not just ChatGPT, a lot of the models themselves we have saw that, such as Claude, uh, ChatGPT, all of this and of course Bing, Microsoft when it first came. So uh, the, uh, they should, uh, regulation should be set in these to ensure that these decisions are not uh, taken. So this is my opinion. Yes, uh, very right. And uh, I think uh, one of the big organizations, Uni Global Union, said that stop the brainless decisions of artificial intelligence. They happen sometimes, like this algorithm in the Netherlands scoring the people or other uh, examples we found that really these decisions are questioned and should be questioned. And there's come the law as help uh, just to implement this uh, smart systems in favor of society and individual. If there are some doubts, so they should should be translated in favor of individual and society. Krista, so what is your view about regulations? Yes, uh, a few days ago I was actually watching a webinar uh, which was organized by TET. Uh, TET is uh, one of our major telecommunication, telecommunication, telecommunication providers here in Latvia. It was, it was a roundtable discussion uh, where uh, cybersecurity directors uh, from different uh, organizations here in Latvia joined and they were discussing uh, cybersecurity budget and they really mentioned these new regulations like uh, GDPR which is quite known but there is also this NIST 2 regulation or own the national cybersecurity law that they need to take into consideration and they mentioned one interesting thing um, before uh, those uh, regulations emerged they actually focused uh, their daily work uh, to strengthen their cybersecurity posture by technical implementations of different uh, things like patching the systems, uh, watching, like uh, improving the firewalls, etc. Now they say that uh, they need to turn their focus specifically to the paperwork so that the procedures are in place and they are corresponding with these uh, regulations. So um, I think that's, uh, that's yeah, something that we, we can think about, uh, how these regulations actually affect our daily routines. 
whether we need uh, a separate budget for that, uh, because they also mentioned that uh, the cybersecurity budget is not dedicated, it's usually bind to IT budget, which is, well, uh, now if you need to comply with the regulation, we might need to fill in some compliance document with 600 plus questions, even that's, uh, that's a reality, and it takes quite a bit of time, of course. So, um, another thing, uh, in my opinion, is that, uh, well, we need to think about uh, proactive versus reactive approach. So, obviously, we can be reactive, and now we have these regulations, we need to, you know, be compliant about it. There will be more regulations, obviously, we'll need to comply with that, with those as well. But uh, if you think a bit, uh, going proactive approach, we can think ahead that, uh, about the things that, uh, that are not right in our own infrastructure. These, these are basics that these regulations are regulating, they, that, that it's not rocket science, right? We just need to think about it ahead. Right. It's true, and it's very challenging for the law and standardizations because it's like a mirror. It's always mirrors the processes in society, like political, technological, economical, social. Yes, law is usually a mirror, so it's mirroring also artificial intelligence. Being proactive, yes, ethics can be uh, proactive, yes, like uh, human in command and ev every single day putting individual like over the artificial intelligence not uh, vice versa and also enforcement of law is very important that's why uh, for instance if we return to the previous question judges should never be automated because they implement the law regulating the in artificial intelligence and if the artificial intelligence could implement the law there could be a problem with this principle and ethics human in command so this is a purely human um, uh, profession and, and, and more. So I must say thank you very much and unless you don't have any last comments, uh, takeaways, uh, thank you for your comments, answers, very good and I think also we see the challenges, we see the opportunities and also we support innovation but we want it ethical, we want it smart and also regulated and human in command. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.